Hey, I'm now going to cover two other queries used in SQL. So two important ones for adding and removing data. We've got insert and then delete. Starting with insert, as the name would suggest, insert is used to add data to a table, specifically adding a record to a table. Remember, a record is already a row in our table. And the syntax is quite simple for insert. Just one slight confusion point is, it's not just insert in the query, it's insert into. So we often just call this an insert query, but actually the first thing you write is insert into. Then you write the table. Then you have brackets and you put down a list of the fields you're looking to add. Then you have values. Then you have a list of the values you're looking to add into those fields. So a bit like before I've talked about, the capital letters are not essential. I would personally definitely capitalize these keywords. The table fields and values are things you're putting in, so they do not necessarily have to be all capitalized. The key thing is when you have a list like fields and values, separate your items with commas like I'll show you now. So let's do a couple of examples on a really simple table called products with a few different mathc related things. We've got stock ID, the name, the price and the quantity as our four fields. In my first example, I want to add another record showing we've got 125 calculators at the price 9.99. So I want to add another row to this table. And following the syntax above, you would write a query something like this. Starting off with insert into, like always, then the table name, which is products, then a list. So you have brackets to start and end the list, and you're just listing the names of your fields. Make sure it matches up to your table. Stock ID, comma, name, comma, price, comma, quantity matches up. Then you have values. Now I've done that on a second line. I always tend to break down my queries into separate lines with each part of it. But if it was all in one line, that'd be perfectly fine. So values, then bracket again, another list, this time with the actual values which are gonna go into that record. So stock ID is our primary key. Therefore that needs to be unique. So all I've done is added one to that previous stock ID. If I added 75 here, that would be wrong because it needs to be unique. The other information comes from this scenario. So calculator 999 and 125 match up to our fields. So what it's doing is looking one by one. So stock ID is 76, name is calculator, price is 999, quantity is 125. It's matching those up, these two separate lists. And so when I run this query, we add a new record to the table which matches up to what I have said. There is an alternative, because I am adding data to every field, actually I don't need necessarily to specify all of the fields. If you are adding a complete record, you don't need to specify the names of your fields. So the difference is here is I've just left off that first list. The second list for values needs to be there because it needs to know what to add. Just make sure if you do this, you have definitely the same number of values as you have fields and the order is the same. So. Actually, you could switch up the order here in the top version. You could have, say, price first, as long as your value for price comes first as well. Whereas the bottom version, it uses the table structure, so it's got to be in the perfect order. Now, if you weren't going to add data to all of these fields, you would need to use that first version. So let's look at that here. If I now want to add 242 pencils, but leave the price field blank for now, I need to have a list of my fields. So what I want is, I want us to have three fields filled in but one left blank, which is not that common, but happens from time to time. You might not want to fill in every part of your record straight away. So here, again, insert into product is the same, but this time I'm only specifying three columns. I'm only, I've only got stock ID, name and quantity. And so I'm matching up 77 to stock ID, pencil to name, and 242 to quantity. I haven't got a price because I don't need one here in this scenario. You could equally just put in price and leave it blank, but you'd have to have a value in your list. So this will just add another record with a blank price. If you do have gaps, like I say, they're not super common and they're not necessarily a great sign, but they do happen. They are called a null field. If something is null, it means it is empty. And just to emphasize again before we look at delete, just make sure when you're using insert, you match up each column to the value and the order is important in how you 
uh, list the names or values. Now looking at delete, which removes a record from a table. Insert adds a record, delete removes a record, removes a row. And the syntax is this, we have delete from, again people sometimes forget the from because we just say delete, but it's delete from, then the table name, and then you just say where you are deleting it from. So like with select, we use where to narrow down what we're doing, where tells it what record to delete. And it can be more than one record as well. Um, I should be clear on that. So let's say in this table, I want to remove the records with a stock ID less than 76. So what I would do is a query like this, delete from products, my table name, where stock ID is less than 76, which is what I've asked for in my question. Now what this will do, we'll go through the table, go through the records, and where the stock ID is less than 76, it's going to delete those. So it's gonna get rid of 74 and 75, and those entire records goes. It doesn't just get rid of that one box, it gets rid of all of the, those records. And so we are left with just these final two. Now, delete is quite powerful. You've gotta be really careful you actually include all the correct information, because if you say, forgot the where clause, if you just went delete from products, that would get rid of all of it. It would delete the entire table and just leave you with your field names. And that's a relatively common cyber attack called SQL injection, where attackers try and use commands like delete to destroy databases when it's not been validated properly. But use where to narrow down your record you want to delete. Rarely, if ever, will you not use where with delete.